Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Balancing Act. I'm Olga Villaverde. And I'm Mato Williams. And boy, do we have a full show for you today. It's a great one. In fact, from bees to literally the birds and the bees. <laughs> but we're going to keep it PC. Plus, creating a home sanctuary. I love that. And a visit to the dairy farm. Now, that's a 180, right? <laughs> Completely. The Balancing Act starts right now. It's a great show, right? Yeah. Managing your finances can be difficult and emotionally taxing. Now more than ever, we're all looking for ways to cut costs by lowering bills, canceling unwanted subscriptions, and much, much more. Here to help us with our financial health is the co-founder and CRO, Yaya Muktazada of Truebill, an all-in-one app that can help you take control of your finances. Welcome to the show, Yaya. Thank you, Montel. Really happy to be here. You know, it's a global crisis right now. Salaries are being cut, massive unemployment furloughs. Folks are managing their finances in new ways, and you really understand that. So tell us why and how you founded Truebill. Absolutely. These are emotional times for a lot of reasons, finances certainly being one of them. In fact, over 70% of Americans say they're stressed about their finances. So we created Truebill to make it easy to take control of your money and ultimately improve your financial health. That's great. Now, what are some of the tips that you have for our viewers to do just that, to take control of their finances? Well, number one, know where you stand. Make sure you have a clear understanding of where your money is and where it's going. Number two, cut costs. Take a look at the subscriptions you're paying for and get rid of the ones that you can do without. And number three, negotiate bills. Make sure you're getting the absolute lowest rate possible for the services you are using. You know, now it sounds pretty simple, but for many, it can be pretty complicated. So how does Truebill simplify the entire process of finances? Well, you can think of Truebill as a financial control center, a single place to manage your entire financial life. With Truebill, you get a complete view of all your money. You can see your account balances, upcoming bills, and monthly spending. You can also monitor subscriptions and get rid of the ones you don't need with one click. Now, you also provide a service that helps people lower the bills. How does that work? Because that's really important right now. How does that work? Truebill is able to negotiate bills on everything from cell phone to cable or home internet, in addition to services like satellite radio or even home security. The way it works is you connect your bill, and we instantly get to work scanning the bill, looking for things like discounts or promotions that you're eligible for, but you may not be getting. From there, we negotiate the bill and lock in the lowest rate possible. We're able to find savings on over 80% of bills, and the average Truebill user ends up saving about $700 per year. So it's real money. And we're thrilled by how much time and money we've been able to save our users. That's what inspires us to, to continue building and ultimately to keep on working to improve people's financial health. You know, most people don't actually realize just how many subscriptions they're paying for or that a lot of these bills are actually negotiable. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Now, is the app easy to set up? It is. You can download it from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store or you can get it from our website at truebill.com. Once you've downloaded it, you link your accounts. We use bank level security to make sure all your data stays super secure. And instantly you get a complete view of your finances. You can take control and start saving. Give them the website one more time. It's truebill.com. Truebill.com. And of course, you can always go up on our website, which is thebalancingact.com to get more information. Thanks so much again, sir, for being here. Thank you. Did you know there are 20,000 known species of bees worldwide? And we need those important pollinators for biodiversity, our gardens, agriculture, and so much more. Today, Amy Hood from Bayer is here with all the buzz. Hi, Amy, how you doing? Hi, Olga, it's great to be with you today. Great to have you. All right, so I'm really happy to be talking about bees. I mean, it's a topic we've previously discussed with Bayer on the Balancing Act. Um, share with us, our viewers, just how integral bees are to our planet. I mean, it's huge. Absolutely. Bees and pollinators such as butterflies and songbirds are really an important part of creating the food that we eat. So whether it's vegetables or fruits or nuts, bees contribute to about a third of those of that part of the food supply. So they're amazingly important, but they face a lot of challenges from pests and diseases and parasites plus real big challenges from lack of forage and habitat, which are the plants and flowers that they rely on for their food. I'm really excited to be a part of Bayer, who's made pollinator health a priority for the last 30 years. And by understanding the challenges that pollinators face, you and I can be part of the solution. And so understanding that hives and 
the colonies have increased 45 to 65 percent over the last 50 years is important, but there are still a lot of things that we can be doing to help contribute to the health of pollinators. Manage bee colonies contribute about 15 to 20 billion dollars to the U.S. agricultural industry every year. So let's talk about how we can get involved, how, how we can help these pollinators. Uh, National Honey Bee Day is upon us, so what can we do? We have a Blue Ribbon Beekeeper Award program for young beekeepers ages 12 to 18, and we'd love to recognize their pollinator activities. And so applications are open now, they can apply, and those awards can be applied for college scholarships or for future beekeeping activities. We also have our Feed a Bee program, which is really about getting more forage and habitat in the ground. And each one of us can make a difference by planting a pollinator-friendly garden with flowers like asters, sunflowers, or coneflowers that really are appropriate for our area. You can check out feedabee.com, and there's amazing information about flowers that would be native to your area, or you can check out a local garden center and they could advise you about native plants as well. Later this year, I'm really excited. We're gonna be featuring one of your blue ribbon beekeepers on this show. I've never met one. Well, so he's an amazing young man. His passion for farming and bees and educating his community are so inspiring. So I can't wait for you to meet him. Do you have a website? Absolutely. Please check out feedabee.com. There's great information there. Thanks again, Amy, for all the information. You take care. Have a great day. And remember to check out our website, thebalancingact.com. We have lots more buzz there for you as well. Well, there are more and more benefits than ever when it comes to using essential oils. That's right. From helping our immune system to sanitizing our hands or just providing stress relief, they literally have become essential. And here to tell us all about it is Mr. Anthony Pedrazzo, who's the president and CEO of Spa Room. Welcome to the show, Anthony. Hello. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. I love this. And the smells are just, I, I wish we had like smell vision Montel, yeah, right? Uh, because we have lavender, eucalyptus, I mean, hundreds in between. Essential oils, uh, Anthony, are, they're just so beneficial. Why? Aromatherapy, as we all know, has been used for centuries. It's been more evident that consumers are realizing the actual therapeutic and health benefits of them. Essential oils can boost your mood or even provide immediate relief when needed. For example, you have lavender, which is relaxing, peppermint, which is refreshing, and eucalyptus, which is invigorating. The two most common ways to enjoy are diffusing and a topical application, which these are not ingestible. Overall, the use of aromatherapy can make a positive impact on your mind and body. Now, something that's become a part of our daily lives right now is hand sanitizers. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about how you're helping when it comes to hand sanitizers. Our focus as the nation's leading aromatherapy brand was to not only meet the CDC guidelines of 60% alcohol, um, but also provide a product that will moisturize your skin and smell great. And we should know that some of these essential oils like lemon and even some of the orange juice do have antiseptic capabilities or properties themselves, correct? Correct. Um, so the lemon and eucalyptus that we did decide to put in there, even orange, um, also does provide some antiseptic relief. And I love the diffusers. You, well, you brought so much here. Sure. And we do appreciate it. We're going to take it home, right? Different types. But right? look at the diffuser. This one's fantastic. And also for the children, look at this little night light as well. And then you got the big mama here. Look at that one. And when you actually absorb this and smell this and, you know, inhale this, you're giving some antiseptic properties into your sinus cavity, you know? Absolutely. So, Anthony, I mean, great diffusers. Tell me more about the displays and how they work. I mean, it's just great. Now you have your humidifier sitting there, which is good for your bedroom or any other room in your home, um, as well as the diffuser that you turned on initially. That's actually our, our number one selling diffuser. There's a lot of benefits um, with obviously using essential oils and different types of um, applications with some of the products you have in front of you. And when I'm feeling under the weather, um, I add some water and drops of my personal favorite, our Breathe Easy blend, the essential oil directly into the humidifier or diffuser and I feel an immediate relief. Um, it cleanses my nose, my nostril, and my, my throat. We, we like to pride ourselves on quality features and functionality at an affordable price, which we believe is differentiating us from our competitors. Um, and all of the products that you see in front of you 
go through a very intensive testing method before we actually launch the product. Anthony, for our viewers who'd like more information on how to get any of these products, where can they go, dear? Hey, you can go to sparroom.com. Well, thanks so much, Anthony, for being with us today and sharing this with all of our viewers. They know, I know they're going to love it. Thank you so much, Anthony. More protection, Montel. You can yeah. never... All right, have enough of this. And if you'd like more information, go to our website, thebalancingact.com. Clean hands, clean heart. Intimacy has a major impact on our overall health, happiness, and mental well-being. But oftentimes, for a variety of reasons, it's not as satisfying as we'd like. Today, we're having an honest discussion about our needs and ways to enrich that part of our life. Bryony Cole from Love Honey joins us today. Welcome, Bryony. How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm glad we're having this discussion. I think it's fantastic to be able to be open and talk about this. Uh, but unfortunately, there still remains a stigma, Bryony, when it comes to our sexual well-being. But your company is trying to change that. In fact, you did a rather in-depth study, I read here, on sexual happiness. What did you find? We did, and you know, the results were really interesting. We found that 25% of people believe sexual intimacy improves their mental health. Three quarters agree a healthy sex life reduces stress. And over half of participants believe the biggest benefit to sex is strengthening our relationships. Absolutely, I'm actually not surprised by the study. Now let's talk about the trends you're finding now during the pandemic. Yes, it's really interesting what's happening to couples during COVID. Over 54% of American couples have become more sexually adventurous. And a third say they're going to keep being adventurous after the crisis ends. So can you give us some adventurous ways that we can enhance our sexual intimacy and improve our relationships? The first thing is communication. And often we find it so hard to talk to the people that we have sex with about the sex we're having. But in fact, that's the, that's the key to the most adventurous, experimental, fun sex ever, is talking to your partner about what turns them on, what turns you on, what you'd like to try, any of your fantasies. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a conversation in the bedroom. You know, it can actually be when you're not trying to have sex. Now, when you are ready to get in the mood, um, think about what gets you in the mood. And for some people that's lighting candles or the massage oils, for other people it's lingerie. It really depends, you know, what makes you feel good and what makes you get in the mood. And I think we all have to try that little bit harder at the moment because we're in our home so often um, doing work and chores and everything else way more than we would um, previously. So we have to make that extra effort of thinking, well, what would turn me on right now? And if someone has issues with communication, you know, I, I will say the, the cards that you have here are pretty good. The playing card, there's lots of questions that one could just kind of give it to their partner and say, hey, look at this question. And as long as it feels good to you, I mean, we're the sexual happiness people. So it's like, what makes you happy sexually? You're going to have good sex if you're happy and feeling great. Great stuff, Bryony. Where can we go for more information? Lovehoney.com. And for the viewers, lovehoney.com forward slash balancing act. And as always, if you'd like any information on any of the products, you can go to our website, thebalancingact.com. Farmers are great stewards of the environment, and around 95% of all dairy farms are family-owned and family-operated. So welcome to the Milking Our Dairy Farm. Cheers. Cheers. Salut. Salut. Values, commitment, dedication, leadership. These are just a few of the virtues that help shape Florida's dairy industry. Our cows don't work for us. We, we work for our cows. I mean, we have cows, if, if they need something done on a Sunday morning at 10.30 or Saturday night at 2.30, you know, we, we make that happen. It's a generational business that luckily our kids are, want to be involved and, and pursue it. We're very fortunate to have raised our family on the farm. And um, it's just a lifestyle that we just really, truly enjoy and hope one day we will have grandchildren that will grow up on the farm just like, just like our children did. 
There are over 120,000 dairy cows in the state of Florida alone. Together, they produce about 300 million gallons of nutritious milk each year. Today, since 2007, it's documented that we, we use 30% less land, 21% less water to produce, we're actually producing more milk per cow. And I do a little illustration, when we have a tour on the farm, my grandfather, we sold, he sold milk in 10 gallon cans. And at that time it took, in 1944, it took five cows to fill a 10 gallon can. Today in 2020, on our farm this past week, it took one cow to fill that can. This marsh on the Rux family farm is a great example of how water can be captured and reused to conserve natural resources. In 2005, I believe, we, uh, we gave up 100 acres of land that we actually had cattle on, on, on our, this farm. And uh, we created our own little, uh, if you want to per se, wetland or filter marsh. So, you know, in the dry season, we can use that water for irrigation. And in the wet season, when it's raining a lot, we're pumping that water in. So it's, it's we're keeping, we're, 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 we're not using any water out of the aquifer. And the win-win is, in my eyes, we've created a, a, a phenomenal area for all types of wildlife. I mean, multiple, multiple alligators, all types of birds. And with some help from technology, Florida dairy farmers today are combining new ideas with generations of commitment so that families throughout the Sunshine State can have nutritious, delicious milk. How the cattle are fed is a great example of this. You can see they're all pretty happy, so sweet babies. Um, and what's really neat about this system is how fast the, calf, the calves catch on to it. Um, for the first 10 days of life, we actually house them individually in like what would be about like a crib um, or a pack and play. So that way we can really kind of monitor and watch them really closely because as we know with newborns, um, there are a lot of things just to, to monitor and really make sure of. And on that 10th day, we introduce them to the calf feeder. And within 24 hours, these calves are so smart, they know how to use the system. That's the part of the technology that I really enjoy seeing is that these calves, we feel like on our farm thrive more because if they don't wanna eat at four o'clock in the afternoon when it's 100 and whatever degrees outside, then at 10 o'clock or two o'clock in the morning, they can get up and they can eat and um, it's available for them. Like most farms all over the country, um, we have a nutritionist on staff. Uh, our nutritionist is actually our veterinarian, so he visits the farm on a weekly basis. Cows are the greatest recyclers in the, I mean, our dairy cows or ruminants in general are great recyclers because, uh, you know, we feed oranges. We feed the, the outside rind of the orange, which if it wasn't for a dairy cow, they would end up in, in a landfill. And as you can see, they're doing just fine. So they've got all their friends. And, and uh, cows are herd animals. Um, and a herd animal means that they enjoy <laughs> stop it. They enjoy being with other with other cows. Every day we're making sure that um, things are, are working the way they should to ensure this world that what we're doing on this farm is sustainable for many, many years to come. And that's what the consumers of Florida need to understand is is the milk produced that they buy in the store is produced by families just just like ours. You know, it doesn't matter if it's in Okeechobee or Mayo or Jacksonville, you know, all the way out to Tallahassee. You know, it's produced on folks that care, care for their animals and care for their land uh, in, in the great state of Florida. Thanks so much for joining us today. That's right, and remember to head to our Facebook page and our website, follow us on Twitter. And you know what you got to do. You got to stay safe, but make sure you tune into the next Battle Snack. We'll see you next time.